Hi guys, it's Claire's and welcome to another video tutorial on watercolor painting with me. For today's video, we are going to be using two special products by Etcher. One of them is the premium watercolor gift cards. And then the other one I'm using, cold press that is, the other, the other item I'm using from them or by them is they are versatile pearlescent a line of watercolors which I'm absolutely excited to be using. So here's what the Etcher gift card looks like. Um, on the back it's like a typical postcard and then on the front is where we're going to be painting. Now this is a special project that I'm doing. I am actually doing a card for a special friend uh, and so this is going to be mailed out. And I, the whole topic of this video is going to be combining florals with an item that is not related to florals or like um, complete opposite of what it is and so but symbolic in, at the same time. So I have used my Cricut and I have cut out a safety pin and I painted it black and what I'm going to do is it's going to go on top after we finish painting our florals and I'm going to tell you what the message behind this actually means as soon as we're finished. So let's start off with our items that we're using. So in addition to these two, which is the postcard and the, or the gift card and the pearlescent versatile uh, etcher line, I'm also gonna be using my White Knights and uh, my White Knight colors. And so for that, I'm going to use the Cadmium Red Light, Carbon, green most definitely the yellow ochre and we'll definitely be also using some of the bright blue so these are the colors I have picked for this session um, if I end up using any more I will definitely let you know moving on to brushes for brushes we are going to be using the Princeton uh, Filbert number no. six let me just get my brush holder here and I'm definitely going to take out the Da Vinci mop brush number one and my Old Faithful number four silver black velvet. The reason I use this so much is because it's got a great pointed tip and it's also one of my smaller ones compared to the six and the eighth that I have. So it really does give me that perfect sizing. Um, I do want to keep the Escada number two handy just as soon as I find where it is. And here we go. Here it is. There we go. So this is what we're going to be using. Hope you guys are ready. And now we are ready to begin. Actually, before we're ready to begin, make sure you got your water. So I got my water ready and I have some paper towel handy as well. So excited to start this project. Let's begin. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly walk through the florals, what we're going to do. Uh, because of the space, limited space that we have, we're going to do three major florals and then do tiny florals around with some greenery. All right, so I'm going to start off by using my mop brush for the main floral, which is going to be kind of like a rose. So I'm going to take some of my Carmen and I am mixing it up on my resin palette by Lisi Arts on Instagram. I get questioned about my palettes all the time, so now I just automatically mention it. Um, and also, guys, just keep in mind, all the products I'm using here are listed in the description below, so if you're wondering where to get them, check out the description of this video. Now, I'm also gonna mix a little bit of this bright blue and see what kind of purple I'm able to get because I want to get like this two-tone look for this so-called rose that I'm doing and so I would like to have a purple version of it or some purple tones in it as well as some of the uh, Carmen tones so just getting a little bit more of that Carmen and mixing it up here perfect I like this I'm going to wash most of this off 
And now we're ready to do our first rows. So for the first rows, I'm just going to do the center. Remember, this is a very loose style of painting. So I'm going to do the center first. I'm going to get a little bit more of that, mix it in here. And I'm doing the center of this rows. Uh, it's going to look like an oval kind of shape. Let's make it over here. So pressing down and kind of trailing off. I want to get a little bit more of that nice bright hue. So I'm just going to get some and add it in there. <clears throat> Adding another like loose stroke here. I'm going to add another one here on this side. Adding these tiny little strokes here that kind of really enhance the look and feel of your floral as a whole. So just kind of add that in, these tiny strokes aside. And then I'm just going to do like some really light strokes at the top to kind of indicate background petals. All right, and now that I have this, I'm just extending this all the way down to the bottom and I wanna make sure I get a nice darker purpley hue that we can kind of add here. So just like that, I'm just adding these darker purple linear lines here. Linear lines, someone corrected me on linear lines. By linear, I mean like just straight, thin and fine lines. That is what I mean, sorry. When I am in the zone, I am literally grasping for words to kind of describe how best to tell you what I am doing. So perfect, I'm not gonna do any more of this. I'm just gonna take whatever's left over, mix it in here. Okay, that's way too purple, so I'm just gonna wash it off quickly and get some of the Carmen just by itself here. Perfect, this is the Carmen I want. Can you see that? There we go. And now I'm going to create the outer petals. So just kind of kind of going around the rows just like this and adding these light strokes. And again, do the light strokes just like I indicated previously. I'm just going to do some at the top as well so it looks like it's enveloping this rose quite nicely which is the whole idea and then I'll just add a little bit of that purple just kind of coming on the inner bit here and then we are done this rose we don't need to do anything more let's just leave this as is I'm just gonna add a couple of strokes at the top to give it like a nice enough shape and move all the color down to the bottom. Just adding a couple of color strokes here and then we're good. We're good with this rose. I don't think we need to do any more even as I kind of sit down and do a couple more strokes. Okay, perfect, we're not doing any more. So now we're moving on to the other florals which are gonna be two of um, hopefully smaller in size than this because we've already taken up quite a bit. So for these ones, I am going to use my filbert and I am going to take some of the cadmium red and I want to see how it goes if I mix it in with the carmen. And I like that kind of reddy orange bit that I am getting. <clears throat> So I'm going to use some of this to create my next floral and this one's going to be like your typical, um, your typical, what's the word I'm looking for? Your typical flower, like five petaled flower and here's how I'm going to be doing that. So I'll do one right over here on this side and I'm going to create one petal first. And then dipping the tip of my brush in water, I'm going to go to the side, create another petal, and then another one here. Then getting some more of this color, I'm going to continue creating these little petals all around. Use, feel free to use the side of your brush as well to kind of give you that nice, those little hints of detail that I kind of tried to show on this end here for this flower. Now I got some color directly from this palette and I'm going to add it to the center here. But at the same time, I'm also going to create like more petals and just leave it at that. 
Perfect, so now we've done that. I wanna do a couple more of this happening over on this end here. So I'm gonna switch this over on, turn it around, and then just using the color that I've mixed, I'm gonna create another flower. So here's one, two, three. Let's get some of that carmine directly from here, dipping the tip in water, creating another one right here. So my middle petal, I am kind of making it by just pressing down on the belly of the brush, and then the rest I'm just using the side of my brush to create it. Then dipping the tip in water, I'm kind of just creating the same thing all over as we kind of turn around. Perfect, so these are how the florals are looking. I'm just gonna wash off my brush now. And what I wanna do, I think at this point, is just to have like a semblance of an, like a background floral. I'm just gonna take some of the loose color that we have, or leftover color, and using the same brush, I'm just going to create some, um, just like little strokes like this. and kind of formulate it almost like it is in a shape that's going upward. And as I go higher, I just wanna make sure that it's getting smaller in size and detail. So the darkest ones, you can even add like whatever leftover color you have, just add it to the bottom <clears throat> to kind of give it a little bit of a, um, difference or change in color, break in color, however you wanna look at it. I'm just using the leftover colors and then kind of making it sporadic as it gets higher or, yeah, higher. So we've done some there. I'm just gonna do some over here on this side as well. And notice I'm like mixing all these colors up and I'm just gonna do a couple over here on this end. <clears throat> and then leave it that way. All right, so now that we've done our flowers, let's add some green. And so for the green, I'm gonna be using my number four. And uh, these are gonna be like the bigger greens before we get into the other ones. So I'm just getting some of this nice green that we have here. Mixing it in onto my palette. And I want it watered down because I want these to be a lot lighter and we'll add darker green at the end just to kind of give it some nice umph or pop. Getting some of that um, yellow ochre and I'm mixing it in with the green to kind of give it a slightly different lighter hue. Okay, so now we've got this 70, 30% uh, mix of green. I'm gonna go ahead and create some nice loose um, stems and leaves. So let's do one here. And I'm just gonna, using the tip, dragging down, tracing away, getting some more of that green, leaving a little bit of white space, dragging down with the tip, trailing away. I'm gonna get some color directly from the yellow ochre and then just add it onto this leaf. And I'll do another tinier one here. Notice how I'm giving it like some nice flow. And now we've got like this two-tone leaf happening there. Again, I'm mixing more color to get like <clears throat> nice hues happening. And I'm gonna join these tiny little florals that we did. Perfect, so just very lightly like so. And we're continuing and we're gonna create some more of these leaves. So let's do one over on this end. And pushing all the color down to the bottom. 
I create another one here. And let's do a couple coming here as well. Kind of just flowing out on top of this flower. And then another one here. Give it some movement. Allow it to kind of flow. I'm gonna get some more color because I need it. And I'm just taking this darker color that I have and I'm just adding it to the veins or the stems of the leaves to kind of give it a nice interesting duotone effect. All right, let's do one over here as well. Now at this point, you're just literally thinking about placement of leaves and you're just kind of going with the flow, like where you feel they need to go. So I'm just gonna add a couple more over on this end here. Break this area up nicely where these florals are. And then just joining these little guys over here at the end. And we are just about ready to add some detail using the metallics. So let me just finish adding these things here and then we're gonna go to the metallics. Um, so for the metallics, we're gonna highlight a couple of areas on the flower, flowers themselves. And for that, I'm going to use, I'm going to continue using number four. So here's my metallic card. I think I definitely want to use some of the sparkling grape, ruby, royal purple. And um, I think I will use some of the teal blue. All right, so let's get started. I'm using the, I believe this is the ruby. So starting with the ruby first, I want to add some nice detail to, to these little guys here and just fluff them up. Now you can barely see it on probably on the camera. You might not be able to see it as well because I'm kind of overlaying this on top of the petals. but you can actually see it as from the angle that I'm sitting down on in. <clears throat> Just adding a couple of fluffs here so that it looks fuller. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and get some of the next color, which is going to be the sparkling grape. And I wanna get some nice detail in here. So just giving it some nice layers sparkling layers like this is this is how i like to enhance the paintings by just adding a little bit of something extra uh, which doesn't look too overpowering and over the top but just soft enough to kind of give you that hint of shimmer and shine And it's like literally the perfect colors for what I have used because they are almost spot on, but they give you that nice hint of shine. Now the next one I'm gonna do is the purple, which is right here, the royal purple that is. And then I'm just gonna highlight these areas here with the royal purple. So notice I am kind of mimicking the same strokes that I did for the flower and I'm just trying to enhance it. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna go back and get some of that sparkling grape and just add that 
at the bottom of this kind of give it that little blend so it doesn't look too different from the actual center but I like that it gives you a nice pop and it's a nice break in color all right so now I am going to add some more green detail but this time I'm taking some of that teal that I mentioned which is right here oops hopefully it's not right over there and I'm going to mix it in with some of this nice green that we have because I don't want it to be entirely teal teal but I want to add a little bit of like green hints to it so that it kind of makes sense and now we're just going to go ahead and create some nice pretty tinier details with the leaves so I'm going to do some happening but giving it nice direction using my number number two just tiny leaves using this nice pretty color that we've mixed up trying to get some nice shape with our leaves here making it look soft and pretty and loose as well and then we're going to go ahead and add a couple more of these just kind of like peeking out from different areas and you want it to blend in nicely with the leaves that we already have so if you're doing the overlapping painting um, overlapping uh, wet on dry that works as well feel free to do that I'm just gonna add a couple of strokes over here on this end so it looks like it's integrating with with these guys here at the top I just want the colors to loosely mix and kind of speak for themselves like more than the detail of the painting I'm going to add some over on this end as well. It's a little bit dry, getting more. So you can see I'm adding more water and kind of making it very, um, what's the word? transparent almost and I'm getting different hues off this green at this point you can even add some of the ochre in it if you wish and I'm just going with the flow I'm trying to make it flow and look like it's got lots of linear uh, movement happening that's what I am doing here with these little tiny strokes that I'm adding all around I'm gonna add some over here as well and again I'm not sure if you can see it but like we've got some really nice I'm taking that away for shadow so you don't see the shadow too much we've got some really nice hints of metallic happening and I am really liking the softness of how this is starting to look I'm getting some of the bright aqua involved as well just to see what that would look like I think it would look very similar to what we already have going on except that it's already pre-mixed for us okay that's perfect um, so I think this is good um, I want to end off by adding a little bit of like some berries almost they look like berries using the ochre just so it gives us a nice split up of color and so I'm just gonna add them very roughly like this and I'll add some over on this end just taking off some water so I can get that nice loose effect and um, let's see we'll just one more area very loosely I think I would like to have these berries 
We've got these two areas. Let's just have one over here, very, very light and loose. Perfect. And now finally, um, the last thing that we're gonna do is adding detail with the, um, with the darker green. So here's my dark green that we've been using this whole time. And this time I'm going to get the color directly from the cake itself. I don't want it mixed. I want it to be nice and dark. So we can get this nice effect. I'm gonna move the metallics aside. So you don't have to kind of see all of this. And <clears throat> the first thing I'm gonna do is add a nice dark center to these. And I'm just dabbing away, adding like these linear kind of lines. Again, I'm saying linear lines because they are kind of really tiny straight lines happening. Same thing over here in an oval shape, forming an oval shape as you kind of go around. And then in the center, I'm just adding a couple of dots. in the absolute center, just a couple of dots, but remember to kind of leave enough space, breathing space or breathing room for this. And this way, now the viewer knows where the center of the flower is, right? That's perfect. Um, I do wanna add a little bit of this to center of the rose, just like that. Now we're going back to the green and I'm just gonna add a couple of details to this greenery that we've already done here on the metallic. So adding some leaves to this metallic version of leaves that we've done. And it's almost like mixing in, but like giving like nice dark and light shadows with the metallics, with the loose brush strokes. <clears throat> and notice how I'm like just trailing off in a squiggly format to kind of get these nice loose looking leaves. <clears throat> and I love the number two for the kind of detail it allows you to get when you're painting tiny, I guess, thin looking leaves like this. And so we've got some here. We need some over here on this end. Just adding a little bit more over here, overlapping. Gives an illusion of fullness and just light and shadow as well. Right, so I kind of went ahead and did that all around before I realized that we were not fully recording, but that's okay because you didn't really miss a whole bunch outside of me just kind of adding these tiny details here and there. So. Once you got the hang of that or you knew exactly what I was doing, you could kind of do it yourself. So there we go. Now we're doing the, now I just wanna end off by adding some lighter versions of the green. So I'm mixing it up with what we have left over. And I wanna add a little bit of detail on the insides between the flowers so that they kind of pop out a bit more. So I'm just adding that in between these florals. So it kind of, you can actually see the difference between the two. And then it also kind of looks like there's leaves peeking out from behind them. I like that idea of giving it some shape or giving the florals some shape by just adding this darker, I guess, coat of green around it. And not 
we're not trying to like overdo the whole thing, but we're just trying to add some tiny little oops details here and there to kind of make it stand out a bit more. Okay, that slip could have cost me dearly. We'd have to redo this whole thing all over again if it didn't if I didn't catch it on time. All right, so just kind of doing stuff like that, just kind of filling up these tiny little areas without looking or making it look like it's too much detail. All right, so there we go. And perfect, that's it. So this is the end result. Now we just wait for it to dry and then. Okay, so this is what, this is what the end result looks like. And I just wanted to show you guys the gorgeous shimmer that it has. So it's only when I kind of tilt it towards the light that you can actually see it. But I love these little details that have um, come alive or made, made these florals come alive. Uh, because it's not all over the place so you can see that right like it's almost like a UV spot printing technique um, in addition to this if you really feel like there's it's a little bit too dark you can always go in with some gouache white gouache kind of just add a little bit detail to these florals here and there but otherwise wouldn't really change a thing and we are now ready to kind of stick this on now this is where it's like, where, how do I want to stick it? Do I want to stick it this way or the other way? It really depends on me. I think I'll do it this way because we've got that white space here and I think that would be a good, um, yeah, good balance. Also because the main floral is there. All right, so I'm just going to do that really quickly and get right back. And we are back. So I've glued this on. I just used some really basic glue and glued this on here. And I love how um, the end result looks. So now we have a card with a deeper meaning without actually using a lot of words. Um, and uh, if the receiver chooses to frame it, then we've also got like this really cute framed piece of artwork. You can have it this way or you could have it this way. It's entirely on, I guess, subjective to what you like. But yes, gorgeous shimmer. So I hope you guys like this video. Let me know in the comments what you thought. If you like videos like this, um, ideas for cards, ideas for DIY paintings, please do consider subscribing to my channel as I do a lot of videos of a similar nature. Um, I also do Procreate videos. So this is where I created the pin and uh, I used the Cricut to kind of cut it out. So hopefully at some point I will also do some Cricut videos so you guys can see how that, um, how we can use the Cricut as well to enhance our projects. But in the meantime, thanks guys for watching. Do follow me on Instagram and tag me if you end up doing this at hello Clarice G. And that's it guys. Have a fabulous, fabulous day. Bye.